I'm John McQuay with 8541 Tactical, and this is Mail Call Mondays, the show that answers your questions about precision rifles, optics, and equipment. Well, we're here on this Monday to talk to you about scope bases. Now, the rifle in front of me is a Remington 700 in a Whiskey 3 chassis system with an Atlas version 8 bipod. We have a Seekins Precision rail. Seekins Precision Rings, and a Falcon Optics Menace 4-14 Power Rifle Scope. Now the reason I want to talk to you about scope bases today is we get a lot of questions about guys that don't understand the differences in flat scope based, angled scope based, etc. Now scope bases come in a variety of different flavors you can get picatinny style bases like the sequence precision base that we have here you can get one piece bases that have the rings integrated into them you can get two piece bases you can get the turn in ring bases uh, several different varieties but no matter what style of base you get it will either be a flat base or an angled base now, on a flat base, in a perfect world, if we had no manufacturing defects, no manufacturing tolerances, everything was absolutely perfect, then on a flat base or a zero MOA base, if your scope was optically centered, then the center of the line of sight through the reticle of the rifle scope would be perfectly parallel to the axis of the bore of the rifle. There would be two straight lines that would extend out the front of the rifle and never meet. Now in order to zero the rifle to be able to actually get our bullet to impact where we're aiming, we need to adjust the zero on the rifle scope so that the point of aim and point of impact correspond. So those two lines intersect. Now if we do so at 100 yards, we call that 100 yard zero and the line of sight the point of aim and the line of the bore, the point of impact will intersect at 100 yards. Now we do that by tipping the line of sight down so that those two lines intersect. Now if we're out at our range and we're shooting long range and say we want to impact the target at 600 yards, well now we're not just working with two lines. What happens is as the bullet exits the bore, because gravity starts working on it as soon as it leaves the muzzle, it's traveling away from the axis of the bore. So that bullet is dropping. So now the further we go out, the further we have to angle that line of sight of the scope down in order to intersect the path of the bullet. So the further we go out, the more down angle we need on the scope. Now this down angle on the scope is called up elevation because we're dialing to meet the point of impact of the bullet. Whenever we talk about adjustments in the scope, we are always talking about moving the impact of the round. Just keep that in the back of your mind for this. Up elevation tilts the back of the scope up to impact. It doesn't actually tilt the scope, it tilts the internal mechanism in the scope so that your line of sight goes down, your point of impact goes down to meet the round as it drops away. Now, on a modern high-end rifle scope with gobs and gobs of internal adjustment, then with that flat base, those starting out with those parallel lines, then you may be able to get out past a thousand yards and still have adjustment to dial on. You can still dial the scope so that your point of aim meets your point of impact. The problem that we run into is not all rifle scopes have that much adjustment. When you read in the catalogs and you see that a scope has a hundred minutes angle of internal adjustment, well automatically you can cut that in half because what they're talking about is a hundred minutes of total adjustment. It means if you dial this turret all the way to the bottom until it stops and then dial it all the way back until it stops, from stop to stop is 100 minutes. From mechanical center to stop will be about half that, about 50 minutes. So if you mount your scope on a flat base and it's advertised as having 100 minutes of total adjustment, then you can bet you're probably actually going to have about 50 minutes of elevation. 
Well, what if that 50 minutes of elevation doesn't get you out to the range that you want to shoot at? Say you bottom out and you're nowhere near what the system is capable of sending a bullet to. Well, that's where our incline bases come in. Now, instead of using your elevation turret to angle the internal mechanism of that scope down to adjust the line of sight, we're putting an angled base on it, and the angled base angles the whole scope down. It will have the front of the scope mounted lower than the rear of the scope in relation to the bore of the rifle. This is where the confusion starts. Guys will see that and say, oh, it's changing the angle of my scope, so how do I compensate for that on my dope? Well, if it takes 1.5 mils to get your 308 to hit your 300 yard target with a flat base, a zero MOA base, then when you put a 20 minute angle base on, it's still gonna take 1.5 mils to hit that same 300 yard target. Here's why. When we initially put our scope or our rifle together with a flat zero MOA base, we adjusted the scope so our point of aim and point of impact coincided at 100 yards. When we put that angled base on now, now we've tilted the scope down 20 minutes of angle. If we did nothing else, again, if this was in a perfect world and there were no manufacturing tolerances, no tolerance stacking, everything was made absolutely perfectly, then if we change that base from a zero MOA to a 20 MOA base and we fired a shot without touching an adjustment on our scope, the bullet would impact 20 minutes angle high. So all we would do to zero out is we dial 20 minutes angle down on our scope. Now our point of aim, point of impact is the same at 100 yards. We've got our 100 yard zero back. We'll still have to adjust the same amount to hit at 300 yards. We'll still put that same 1.5 mils of elevation on our scope to hit at 100 yards. So what's the benefit of an angled base then? If it doesn't change our dope, if we still have to dial the same amount in our scope to get to where we're going. Well now, let's go out to that range where your scope bottomed out the last time. You dial that same amount of elevation on to where it bottomed last time, but now, since we had to dial down to meet that point of aim and point of impact at 100 yards, we have that in reserve now at long range. Now we have an extra 20 minutes of angle that we can dial on the scope because we didn't use that to zero at 100 yards. That is the benefit of a 20 minute angle base. Now when you get into the higher angle bases, 30, 40, etc., those are really for getting way out there, extreme long range, where you're not worried about zeroing your scope at 100 yards. Because most likely if you throw a 40 minute angle base on a 308, you're not going to get a 100 yard zero. That scope's not going to be able to dial down that. And that is the only drawback of a 20 minute angle base on some setups. If you throw a 20 minute angle base on a rifle with an old rifle scope, you may not have enough elevation adjustment to be able to get a 100 yard zero. If that's the case, then what I suggest is replace the rifle scope because that rifle scope will not be well suited to long range shooting. Don't replace the base because that's kind of going about it the total wrong way. You're still gonna be left with a scope that has insufficient adjustment for long range shooting. Now with a 20 minute angle base, if you're one of those guys that you only have access to a 500 yard range, 300 yard range, what have you, there's no drawback to that 20 minute angle base if you're using a rifle scope that will still allow you to get 100 yard zero. It just won't be there. You'll never get into that elevation adjustment. But on that day that your buddy calls you and says, hey, we got to shoot out west. Do you want to come? We're going to shoot out to 1,000 yards. Now you'll have a rig that is capable of shooting that far because you have that 20 minute angle base. You'll be able to utilize that extra 20 minutes angle adjustment in your scope. That is the rough down and dirty on the difference between zero MOA scope bases and 20 MOA scope bases. Now I've tried to run through this kind of quickly. I tried not to add a whole lot of extra to it. 
If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below and we'll get to them. This is one of those that once the light goes on and once you understand why it works the way it does, you'll look back and figure out why you had any problem with it at all. But sometimes guys have a real difficult problem grasping it to begin with. So if you have questions, please send them to us. If you've liked this video, please make sure you click that thumbs up button. If you want to send us a comment, please do so in the comment section below or send it to us on Facebook or Twitter. If you're a subscriber, thank you very much. If you're not a subscriber, please click the subscription button. It helps us out and YouTube will let you know when we release new videos. We won't send you any junk mail and it doesn't cost you anything. It's totally free. So, please subscribe. Until next time, get out and shoot! I know some of you guys have noticed and commented on the fact that the videos are getting shorter and shorter. This video is going to turn out to be, I don't know, probably somewhere under the uh, 12 to 15 minute line. And the reason for this is we're trying to pick one topic and cover one topic each week. Uh, we have started getting fewer and fewer questions that we can really answer in the show's format. So we've had to change things just a little bit. And the final reason is that a shorter show, being in the uh, 15 minute or so timeline, our analytics have shown that you guys actually watch the show all the way through. With the longer format shows, it doesn't seem like you're actually watching them all the way through. You're only watching about 12 or 15 minutes and then cutting them off. I know that doesn't go for all of you. There's some of you out there that probably pop up some popcorn and sit and watch the whole show all the way through, even if we do a 45 minute segment. And I thank you guys for that. But the final reason that I find it easier to do the 12 or 15 minute shows is it is quicker for us to produce, it's quicker for us to process, and it is a whole lot quicker for us to upload. A 45 minute episode can take up to eight hours to upload because of YouTube, because of internet connections and all that fun stuff. And then once it's uploaded, YouTube still has to process it before you can watch it. So shorter episodes allow us to get it up quicker in a shorter amount of time and ensure that I still have enough time to do the show, do the other things we've got going on, and of course, live my life outside of YouTube. So, I hope you guys understand. I hope you continue to watch and continue to stick with us. Doing a little bit shorter shows on a regular basis will allow us to get more content out. We've got a bunch of stuff that is waiting in the wings here, um, getting ready to go up. So, please bear with us. And we're still going to throw you a bone every now and again and do some longer stuff. Uh, we should have some shooting skills videos coming up here shortly. And we're going to get to work some more here on the Meg Arms Ma 10 build. So if you have any questions or if you have any comments, good, bad, or indifferent, please leave them in the comment section below. I do read them all and I do like to hear what you guys have to say. I do this show for your benefit, so if you guys aren't getting any benefit out of it, we need to change the way we're doing things. Thank you for watching and make sure you're getting out there and shoot.